Hi, in this video we're going to walk you through the process of making a 1% agarose gel. Now, in general, agarose gels come in a range of percentages depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish. So for example, if you're trying to separate large DNA fragments, you would make a low percentage gel like a 0.7% or 0.8% gel. And if you are trying to separate some small fragments, um, then you want to make a denser gel, and so you'd make something like a 2% agarose gel. This, stuff, this right here is a common range of concentrations for agarose. Okay, so what we're making is a fairly kind of middle of the road sort of gel. Now, again, notice that these concentrations are listed as percents. Okay, so this is a percent solution. So what does 1% actually mean? Well, 1% is equal to 1 gram of solute per 100 milliliters. So 1% agarose gel means you need to have 1 gram of agarose for every 100 milliliters of total solution that you want to make. Now, the amount you actually weigh out will vary depending on the volume that you actually need to make. So if you're making a small gel, which is fairly common, then you'd probably be making 50 milliliters. In which case, at 1% gel would mean that you would need 0.5 grams of agarose. Uh, if you are making a large gel, then maybe you're making a, well, 100 milliliters is probably a fairly common large gel, and so that would be one gram. If you're making 200 milliliters of agarose, maybe you're running, making two gels, okay? Then you would double the amount, so you would make two grams, or you would weigh out two grams of agarose, okay? So these are the calculations you'd be making. So depending on what kind of percentage you would need to use, uh, you would calculate how much you would need to get of your agarose per 100 milliliters, which is a very simple thing. It's right there in your percentage. And then based on the volume you're making, you're going to decide how much you actually need to weigh out. Okay, so in our case, we are making 100 milliliters of 1% agarose. Okay, so in our case, we will need to simply weigh out one gram. Now that we have our calculations done, we can start to prepare the solution. And so the first thing you want to do is check what kind of buffering system your lab will use. And so it's usually either a TBE buffer or a TAE buffer. You should never use water. Always make sure that you are using the buffer that will be used for running the gel. So once you have that buffer selected, uh, you can measure that out, and then you're going to weigh out your reagent. And in our case, it's just one gram. So it's very simple. You don't have to be absolutely precise with, with these. Um, it doesn't matter if the DNA is running through a gel that is 1.0% or 1.05%. Your DNA is still going to run through it. Now, once you have the reagent weigh weighed out, you're going to transfer that into a flask. In general, you want to start off with a little bit of the solvent inside the flask whenever you're making any solution, a little bit of the solvent in there first, and then you're going to add your reagent, so in this case the agarose. Now, agarose does not dissolve at room temperature, so it's going to stay um, in powdered form. Uh, and what we're trying to do is we're going to try to make sure that that agarose goes to the bottom of the flask directly. And you'll notice that Konya has actually saved a little bit of the the buffer pour after adding the agarose. This way she can wash down the sides of the flask uh, to make sure that all the agarose goes to the bottom. Now we're not trying to do this because it, of the concentration. We're trying to do this because if you have agarose stuck to the sides of your flask and it cooks onto the sides, it's going to be very difficult to wash that flask afterwards. Okay, so you want to make sure that the, all the agarose is in the bottom of the flask along with your buffer. Now, agarose does not dissolve in the buffer on its own. It has to be heated, so this is where we throw it into the microwave. Uh, and depending on the power of the microwave, you're going to set it to either a minute or two. Um, usually about a minute is probably enough. You want it to get just hot enough to just before it starts boiling. Um, so you want to be watching it carefully to make sure it doesn't boil over. 
As soon as you see it bubbling, stop the microwave. Now, next what you want to do is you want to wait for the agros to cool down a little bit. Uh, it should still be quite warm, but you should be able to touch the bottom of the flask with your hands. And then you're going to add some ethidium bromide to this. Now, you have to be very careful with ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide is a carcinogen. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Is that okay? Yeah, that's for my clears. It's a very small amount. Once the ethidium bromide is added, um, swirl it gently. Now, you don't want to um, mix it too vigorously. You don't want to be introducing air bubbles into your agarose. So just gently swirl it around to distribute the ethidium bromide fairly evenly throughout your gel. And then you are ready to cast. So in this case here, we will be pouring two gels. One of them already has the combs in place. So uh, you can pour the gel with the combs already in place, it's simply going to go around the combs and it's going to set. Or you can pour the agarose first and insert the combs afterwards. The key here is to make sure that the, the gel comb is in nice and straight so that you have a good starting point for your DNA to migrate. Once we've poured the gel, uh, we're going to wait for about 45 minutes to an hour for the gel to set. Uh, 45 minutes is a rough guideline. After 45 minutes, the gel should be ready regardless of how big the gel is. Once the gel is ready, you will have to remove the combs and you do so by pulling straight up. Um, quite often students uh, try to wiggle the comb before removing it. That tends to damage the wells, so please make sure you don't do that. Just pull straight out. And now your gel is ready. It's that easy. See you in the next video.